Hi, I have the new Garmin Venue SQ and I'm doing this video on how to customize it. It's packed with features and there just isn't a lot of information out there on how to go through and make the watch very customized for everything that you want. So I'm going to go over the customizing the watch face, the exercises, the widgets, the control center, going through the settings, and I think that'll do it. So let's get started. The Venue SQ comes with uh, three onboard watch faces. The one that is currently displayed is the default and is a simple analog watch face. To edit that, we're going to go do a long press on the B button. We're going to tap on watch face. And you can see there's the analog. There's a different uh, digital display and another digital display. You can add watch faces through the Garmin IQ app. Um, there aren't a lot of square ones at this point because Garmin has been doing round faces for so long. So we can go, I'm gonna pick this digital one. I can tap edit. You can change colors. You can change the actual time marker, so the second minute hand, um, and you can edit your data fields. Each watch face comes with some data fields. So if I want to change uh, the steps here, I'm just going to tap it. And each time I swipe up, it's going to give me different data fields that I can choose to have on this watch face, which is really nice. I haven't run across this with any other type of smartwatches. Most of them have come with their own set data fields and you don't get to pick them. So again, I can just go to any of these, swipe up swipe down to change my data fields. When I'm done, I can just hit the back button and hit the back button again. And there's my new watch face. Okay, to move around the Garmin SQ, or the Venue SQ, I should say, you've got two choices. It's actually a circular display, so you can go down or you can go up. So by default, it's gonna have a bunch of information that you may or may not want on here. To edit or add widgets, simply go into one of your widget screens, do a long press on your B button. Here you can reorder or remove widgets, but we're gonna go into settings and then widgets. And here you're gonna see all the widgets that are available to you. Health staff, notifications, history, calendar, music controls, and you can go to add more. And this is where you'll see all the rest that are available. Uh, some people like to have a bunch of widgets and some people don't. There's body battery, steps, intensity minutes, stress, calories, last run, last swim, etc. So you can add simply by pressing the plus. And then now it shows it's, it's in with my widgets. I'm gonna hit the B button to go back. To delete a widget that you don't want, you just bring up the widget, do a long press. You can reorder the widget or you can I can hit remove widget and it's gone. Next we're going to decide what exercises we want to see. So if you press once on your A button, it's going to ask you the first time through to select your favorites. And these are the ones that will appear every time you go to do a manual exercise. I'll press this little arrow over here is telling us that this is the button we want to press. Now, like the other screen we were looking at for your applications, if you do a long press here, we can manage our apps. And again, we can decide what order we want to put these in. So walk, I think I want to put the breath work. I'm going to press uh, reorder. I'm going to move that down to the bottom. Right beneath elliptical. So now if I press the A button, the ones that I have picked to be my favorites are the first ones to come up. It's going to come up with one, two, three, four, five. Um, I still have access to all the other ones. If I want to manually start them, they're all still there. It just really is, is showing your favorites when you first press that button. Okay, let's talk about the data fields. When you go to start a manual exercise, you'll come up with a little menu that you can tap here. You're gonna go into settings and data screens. 
By default, there are three data screens and they can each hold up to three data fields. So if I go into screen one, it shows I have three fields. If I actually want less than that, I can change that to two. Or if I want even just one thing to show, I can change it to one. And then we're going to go back. To edit the data fields, we're just going to tap on edit. And let's say I want something different in this data field. You have a lot of choices here. You've got timer fields, distance fields, pace fields, speed, heart rate, cadence, temperature, and other fields. So depending on what exercise you're picking, you're gonna have different data fields available to you. To change a data field, you just tap on that, pick one that you wanna have, for instance, lap distance. Now it shows lap distance. I can tap on another one. Maybe I want to do a timer, lap time, and you can see the little green arrow here. Just press that and hit your back button, and we're back to our three screens. So there's three screens worth of data fields that you can customize. Next thing we're going to do is edit our control panel. So to get to the control panel, you want to do a long press on your A button. By default, there are nine, uh, nine available spaces for the items that you want. So here we've got do not disturb, uh, find my phone, this is the wallet, the Garmin Pay, uh, brightness settings, I can power off, there is a stopwatch feature, there, this is to play music from my phone, this will lock my screen, uh, this turns on and off Bluetooth. Um, to get rid of one of these and to use something else, hold down your B button again, press the one you don't want, hit your little garbage can, and now you can see we have a plus key. So there's the, it's just telling us we've got one space available. So here's your other uh, control options because you only have nine spaces, but you have more than that as far as choices go. We have a lock screen. Save location, sync, set time with GPS, alarms, timer, and assistance. So I think I want to add timer function, and I'll leave the alarm function. When you're all done, you can just press back, and you can see it's saved. You can also rearrange how these appear on your screen. So for instance, if I want the wallet down here, I can just slide it and it just swaps places with the uh, one that you're, you're moving to. Next, we're gonna go into the system settings. So if you do a long press on your B button, um, you're gonna see you have the watch face, which we already did. So you can get to it from here. Clocks, this is a shortcut, so you can get to alarm, stopwatch, timer, and time, whether you want the 12 hour or the 24 hour clock. History, this is another way of seeing the history of your activities. So for instance, I can see I did the elliptical today and as you, as you tap down on any item, it takes you further in. You can see I'm done. You can see yesterday I went on a, on a nice walk, two and a half miles. It, here it shows my time, my pace, my calories, my steps, my heart rate. So that's also another way. Okay, so from here we're going to go down and press the gear icon, and we've already set up the activities and apps, and we've set up our widgets, and we've gone through the controls menu, so now we're going to go into the shortcut screen. You do have a left swipe. Um, there's not a left button, but there's a left swipe, and you can decide what you want to bring up with that. So I think for my shortcut, I want to be able to easily get to my music controls. But you also have choices of the save location, alarm, stopwatch, timer, brightness, wallet. Or you can disable that swipe button all together. And to get to that, there you go. You just left swipe. So long press on B, back to settings. We did the watch face. We did, uh, oh, here's our wrist heart rate options. I have mine on auto. You can set an abnormal high alert. 
I'm gonna set mine for like 130. That just means if you're sitting around doing nothing and your heart all of a sudden jumps up to 130 or whatever you wanna pick here. So I just turn that on by pressing that little button there. You can broadcast your heart rate, um, Pulse OX. So Pulse OX is what takes your oxygen levels. Um, the old garment I had only did it during sleep. This one gives you an all day option. And what that will do is when you're sitting around or you're having a period of inactivity, it will periodically take your blood oxygen level also. It, this does affect your battery life. So for me, I'm just gonna say during sleep, it will pick a four hour window while I'm sleeping and it will continuously monitor my blood oxygen level. Okay, uh, sensors, I don't have any, and I don't have any sensors. There is a compass and you can start calibration doing it this way. Uh, phone options, so my phone is connected notifications. You can choose to have your notifications show up while you're working out, while you're not working out. Um, I have mine show up whether I'm working out or not. Um, connected alerts. I actually don't want those. What that does is every time your Bluetooth gets too far away, which is about 30 feet, um, it will it will buzz you on your wrist and tell you that you're not connected to GPS. Another option to pair the phone, but we already did that at the very beginning. Uh, user profile, VO2 max. VO2 max is a measurement of um, your cardiovascular level. Safety and uh, tracking. This is kind of interesting. So in the app, you can set up people who will get notified in the event that you were to get hurt, so incident detection. If you're on a bike and you get in an accident, what would happen is that incident would be detected and it would send your GPS location and a link to where you're at uh, to the people you've set up in the app. Assistance, so if you, if I wasn't working out, but I hurt myself, I could still hold this button down. Five track allows you to like, if you're uh, doing a 5K or something like that, people can actually track where you're at. Just to show you something, another way to send out an emergency assistance to the people you've already set up, this doesn't go to fire and rescue, it just goes to people you've set up in your phone, is if you hold the A button down for three seconds, It's gonna show that in five, four, three, two, one, it's gonna send out an emergency notification to the people that I've set up. Okay, back into settings, we're almost done here. Phone, safety and tracking, uh, activity tracking. I have on, move alert, I don't like that on. I know a lot of people do though. It basically buzzes you and tells you to get off your butt and start moving. Uh, goal alerts, move alert, goal alerts is on. Auto activity start, a lot of people like this. Um, that means when you start running, I think within a minute or two, it's gonna start tracking you automatically. All right, the last thing in our menu here is the system settings. Auto lock, that's just whether or not your screen locks. Uh, your language, time, date, the display there's some good things to have here. This is your brightness. Obviously, the brighter you leave it, um, the faster your battery will go. Time out. So you have a choice of short, medium, long, or the always on. And this is what the always on display looks like. It's just a faded uh, version of your regular clock, but it always uh, displays for you. Gesture is whether you always want to be able to lift your wrist and you know and see what's going on have your watch face turn i'm not going to go into every single one of these uh, but here at the, towards the end you've got a reset software update and about 